Hi, welcome to Product School. My name is Vignesh, and uh, I am a technical product manager at Skykick. Uh, prior to Skykick, I have worked with large enterprises and e-commerce places like uh, eBay, Amazon, Microsoft, uh, and uh, telecom industry like uh, T-Mobile. Uh, accumulating my product experience across from the enterprises sector, and currently I'm trying to, uh, uh, you know. Uh, find a balance between uh, how we can like scale products from a startup world and uh, bring them to uh, achieve um, the bigger enterprises level achievements that they are looking out for. So uh, that being said, uh, I'm really excited about talking um, products to you and talking my um uh, you know thoughts about how to conceptualize product scalability and i thank product school for giving me this opportunity to uh, you know share my thoughts and uh, learn from you and also uh, uh, you know feel free to uh, reach out to me over my email or uh, you know my linkedin is right over there uh, feel free to connect and uh, i look forward to uh, collaborating with you all and uh, you know learn and share so that being said, I'm going to quickly jump into the topic today. So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the conceptualizing uh, techniques for product scalability. Um, so that might sound a uh, very abstract um, or uh, you know a very unique uh, piece of uh, product management. Where as a product manager, when you start developing a product or when you start thinking about uh, new ideas, the whole purpose of uh, you know doing a product or building a product is to like solve some needs, uh, solving a problem or uh, solving. Uh, a customer's needs to put it that way so uh it could be like anything it could range from uh, it could be an e-commerce a, a product or it could be a software solution or it could be a SaaS, or it could be a, even a simple uh you know a hardware device that we are trying to like build uh, it could be anything but the end result of you know building a product is to like solve a problem so um why do we do that? Do we stop at a place uh, where saying that, hey, my product is like uh, behaving fine and I don't have to like uh, think about, uh, you know, scaling it because it's already been like catering the needs. Never, uh, we, we, any any product, like 99% of the products around the world uh, don't want to like think about, uh, you know, I'm good with where I am and I don't want to like do any kind of like enhancements or uh, any kind of like um, market penetrations across with what I'm having currently. Because all we try to like do when we build a product is to like look at how are we going to like scale the product and how are we going to like, you know, cater the needs of different kind of customers or different kind of users that we are trying to like, uh, you know, cater here. Um, so that being said, when you come to product scalability, I, I personally feel there are like different techniques and different uh, methods and different, uh, uh, you know, thought processes involved in scaling a product. But uh, the kind of information that uh, seems uh, to work well with me are listed below here. So defining the problem statement uh, and iterate and innovate, uh, the feedback loops, the strategic planning, the user expansion, uh, being the voice of customer and uh, doing the market research. So these are the key elements and the key frameworks that I use uh, and uh, that has worked well for me from scaling even an enterprise level product. Uh, like when I worked with Amazon, there are like a multiple examples where um, we all know about the Kindle, right? Uh, so when Kindle initially started, uh, it was uh, basically built uh, to um, let the users read their favorite subscriptions, uh, read their favorite newspapers um, and, uh, you know, magazines. Uh, but magazines uh, is a very interesting concept for Kindle. When I worked with Amazon back uh, in like 2010, 2011, uh, we were slowly, uh, you know, migrating from uh, being just a newspaper stand to, you know, have a whole publication, uh, 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 you know, pipeline built for Amazon's Kindle for us to penetrate new markets. So how did the thought process happen that I'm going to like break that down and give you that example with the frameworks that I have like listed over here. So when you start with a product uh, like uh, Kindle, which is uh, already a pre-existing product in the, uh, in the industry, uh, we start with defining the problem statement where 
what are we going to like solve here? Uh, the problem statement could be like really abstract for like high level understanding. Like say, I want the users to, uh, you know, be able to um, buy and read their favorite magazines or their favorite books or uh, be it anything that is like e-readable. And I want to like be able to like, you know, uh, experience the book without actually buying a book or without actually buying a magazine. So how do we bring that problem into like different modules um, is where you iterate and innovate. Uh, so when you're trying to like innovate a product or when you're trying to like, you know, iterate what is the existing functionality of the product and how we are going to like innovate on top of that. Uh, we use the problem statement to uh, help us uh, innovate and help us, uh, you know, uh, ideate the new uh, frameworks that are needed for these enhancements. So in this case, when the Kindle is first uh, being like used to um, help the users, um, you know, just view magazines or view just the newspapers. The next step is to like allowing them the uh, experience of, uh, you know, reading a book or reading a colored magazine on Kindle Fire, uh, which is like a whole different game. So what are the innovations that is involved behind that? Like we need to like, you know, build an architectural platform, which uh, lets the users to be able to like, you know, download their book and, uh, you know, get the publications to be able to like, you know, send the, uh, send the books in a desired format. So those kind of uh, thought process, like how are we like enabling it from the back end, or how are we going to like enable uh, this new enhancements of the product uh, in the front end and with the business is uh, is something that a product manager needs to like think about and uh, work from uh, the problem statement itself. So once once you figure out the existing pieces of uh, your product and uh, you are trying to like you know build on top of that based on the problem statement that you have, um, you, you, you're you almost like set with, uh, you know, building a beta version of what you want to like, you know, show for your end customers at that point. But in order for you to like reach there, there are like different other uh, different other uh, areas of uh, uh, important verticals that we need to like touch upon. Like, um, you know, the feedback loops, the feedback loops are like a really important concept or a really important tool uh, method for us to like understand uh, what kind of feedbacks are we like receiving from the end customer and if we are even um, um, even progressing in the right path. Uh, so that being said, um, you know, feedback loops could be uh, both internal and external. Um, and uh, it also helps a product manager to, you know, uh, get a perception from a, user, uh, from a user's POV or uh, from a technical um, engineer's POV if it is going to be an internal feedback loop. Uh, so the Designing the feedback loops is essential for a product manager to be able to, like, you know, give, um, um, get the information that is like required for him to like understand how the product is behaving in the market and how what kind of like um, difficulties or pain points are the customers talking about and uh, derive like patterns based on the feedback that he gets or she gets. Um, so as a product manager, when you hear like a lot of noise happening around like a particular segment of a product, which you think is like a key piece of the product that is helping the user to function or the helping the user to like, you know, even stay uh, stay with your product, then that's something that needs to be like prioritized on uh, on the top level and being addressed, so that uh, you know you won't end up losing uh, the market. And as we all know, uh, it is really important for us to understand that uh, as an user, uh, he is not obligated or she is not obligated to uh, stay with your product for more than like uh, you know like two three minutes. Uh, um, so the basic uh, attention of a user uh, over your product is less, less than like two or three minutes in this fast-paced world. So um, as a product manager and as a, as a whole team, uh, it, it, it is like a really stressful environment for all of us to make sure that uh, we enable all the users to stay and experience the product and, uh, you know, give the best in those two or three minutes. But it is clearly not possible without addressing the pain points of the customers. So 
for example, uh, if I want to like go and buy a sneaker, uh, I go and when I type sneaker on uh, an e-commerce platform, like say eBay, um, the listings that appear in front of me needs to be like super relevant with, uh, with what I'm searching for. So how do we have that connect? A product manager needs to be able to like, you know, have the feedback loops and the market research being done like thoroughly for us to understand what the product is, what the user would actually require from the com- from the company or from the product or from the feature that they are like, you know, trying to like buy or use here. So um, these things are all the things that is like listed below here in the slide are like interlinked. They are all there. Uh, think of it like, uh, you know, the avatar world where uh, all, all the creatures and uh, everything uh, is like interlinked. So similarly in product management, when it comes to like scaling a product uh, without thinking about these frameworks, without, uh, you know, using these uh, techniques that is like listed below, be it a problem statement, you cannot, you cannot define a problem statement if you, if you don't behave uh, like your customer, if you don't have the voice of customer, and if you are just being a voice of customer, you are not going to like do anything if you don't have the uh, uh, if you don't have the urge to go and solve it and define the problem statement or go and iterate and innovate. So you see that, right? Like it's it's kind of like an interlinked uh, uh, terminology over here, uh, the product scalability, and under that horizontal is like a lot of verticals like this problem statement, feedback loops, user expansion, voice of customer, market research, iterate and innovate uh, so these are just the frame these are just the verticals that work well for me and it were it, it, it helped me to like you know scale enterprise level products like amazon's kindle uh from the existing newsstand to uh, you know delivering the magazines and uh, books all across the globe along with the kindle fire so um and also it helped me to like you know scale uh my scale a startup like fresh words penetrating into like new regions like uh, the middle east and africa and uh it has also like helped me uh with eBay in redefining the way how a refurbished framework should look like uh, for the refurbished uh, customers. And uh, it is currently helping me to like also uh, put my thoughts into uh, action, but, uh, you know, integrating new uh, services for, uh, you know, B2B uh, customers or Skykick. So, um, so that being said, um, I, I do know that there are like a different other ways of, uh, you know, conceptualizing uh, the scaling of a product. Uh, but unless we don't have the basics of, uh, unless we don't understand the basics of how we are going to like, uh, you know, derive a product and how we are going to like make room for us to like make those adjustments as and when we grow and as and when we scale, uh, it's it's not going it's not going to be like feasible for us to uh, scale a product if we don't have these frameworks in place. So, that being said, I'm just going to like give you a, a minute to uh, you know go through this and uh, probably uh, get prepped for uh, the next set of like uh, deep diving into uh, uh, the journey itself. Now here, uh, I'm going to break down. Um, what we are doing as a product manager and what we are supposed to uh, keep your, keep our eyes on uh, when we start developing a product, be it an existing or, or a product from scratch. So the journey, as I call it, um, it involves um, like four different aspects where you start with ideating a product, right? Like we, we think about the idea, we think about the customer problem statement, and we think about what is uh, what is currently there in the market, which is like addressing the, uh, those kind of like problems, or if it is going to be like a completely unique uh, unique solution for uh, the customers over there, then it's going to be uh, it's it's going to be like a breakthrough for the customer and the users themselves. So ideating those kind of uh, the product or the solutions is, will be like the first stage as a product manager. And um, and uh, I, I, I would also like talk about why this is like important for us to know uh, with respect to the product scalability factor. Because when you ideate, think of it, think of it, as an exercise that you're doing it to yourself uh, before uh, before even like going to scaling a product once you once you start thinking about uh, developing something 
um, like I previously said, it is important for us to like, you know, understand why are we doing this and uh, what is going to like, you know, happen if I do this and uh, how am I going to like do it in a way where the market is going to like look at me and say, hmm, okay, let me try this, try this product out. So in order for us to like, you know, think about all that, uh, we need to like, you know, formulate our ideas and uh, put the ideas into like presentable and actionable modules and execute them. So that's that's what I'm trying to like, you know, describe here over the journey. Because only when you have the basic building blocks right is where you will have the ability for your product to go and scale. If you don't have the basic blocks right, uh, say if you if you have built a subpar product, you will never know it is a subpar product because you keep on, you know, patching it up and not scaling it. And you would think that, oh, my product is functioning fine. It's just, just that we are catering to like different needs at different times. And uh, when you look back, all you would have is like patches all over your existing product. And you haven't done anything to like, uh, you, you would end up in a place where you'll be like too late to even think about bringing in like new announcements that were that are actually going to like help you scale the product. So as we talk about uh, the journey, it is very important for us to like understand that, uh, you know, strategizing a product is, uh, is, is equally important uh, when uh, you put in your planning uh, into action. So when I say strategizing, it's a very, very abstract uh, word or it's a very, um, uh, you know, commonly used term when we uh, try to like, you know, think about how we are going to like deliver and uh, what are we going to like, you know, do to make sure that the market understands the, uh, the product that we are trying to like, you know, pitch to them. So in order for us to like, you know, do not in order for us to not to have the kind of uh, feeling where um, um, you feel overwhelmed that the product is not hitting the right milestones or the product is not behaving the way how you wanted it to behave. It is important for us to understand that the strategy needs to be bifurcated into the short-term goals and uh, the big rocks or uh, the long-term ones, what we are trying to like achieve at the end. This is very important and uh, this is very crucial uh, in, in, in scaling a product, uh, in conceptualizing uh, the product scalability. Uh, it is important to have the strategy of defining the smaller milestones. The smaller milestones could be uh, could be anything that is related to solving the customer's needs. Say the version one of your product is going to like solve a y, x y z for the customer z uh, customer needs, and the version two is going to like solve x y z and give the customer the ability to perform certain actions. So those kind of like differences you could bring along on your milestones, which will help you to, you know, build blocks, like consider Legos or uh, think of it as, uh, you know, um, laying a foundation and, uh, you know, building, uh, uh, building, building a community on top of it. And then, you know, expanding the community without having the foundations and the building blocks in place. Uh, there is no point for us to like, you know, branch out and have community. It's also going to like crumble back. Like how I said earlier, when you look back, you don't want to like see patches over your product. You need to like, you know, see the product branching it out branching it out itself and, uh, you know, uh, behaving as uh, the market leader for the customers who are trying to like, you know, use it for the first uh, specific action. So to, to do all this, we need to have a solid team. Nothing in this world, uh, of, as humans, we are all like social animals. We need to like, you know, make sure that uh, we understand a product is catering, not just like a single user. It's going to like catering, uh, it's going to cater or it's going to fulfill a whole community or it's going to fulfill a whole set of like market, you know, for, in order for that to like, you know, have that kind of scaling, you need a proper team. You need to invest your time in building a solid team uh, with like-minded cultured people 
people is very very essential for you to like you know ideate branch and grow and uh, as a product manager it is also very essential for us to like you know collaborate and work with like different uh, different teams and different set of like people for us to like understand what the pain points are from their perspective and see how we can address them in order for us to like you know scale a product uh, the the product should fly by itself but for that to happen the product manager should be able to you know give all the necessary feed in all the necessary information and feed in all the necessary um uh, you know uh, structure for the product to you know fly by itself so this is like the whole journey of how um how how a product manager should uh, you know start building the blocks and uh, what are the different uh, you know steps that is like involved for us to like you know scale a product right from the scratch so as i said i'm going to like reiterate again we start by ideating and then we discover what's happening and then we uh, provide a strategy we think about publishing a strategy which is going to like work, help us to like step towards our end result which is like the big rocks so the stepping stones are the short term milestones which will help you to like you know achieve what you want to like achieve at the end and for us to like do all this we need to have a kick ass team which is going to help us to deliver such awesome products and uh, as a product manager you need to collaborate and you need to like you know have the ability to like grasp ideas and be a solid listener uh, rather than a problem solver at the first place uh, so only when you listen is where you get feeded in with the information that is required for you to go and do stuff so that being said i'm i'm just going to like leave another 30 seconds on this page so you can grasp the information uh, and i'm trying to like keep it really minimalistic uh, and uh, provide like the little information and uh, have this in a more engaging way so uh, i don't want to like flutter everyone with like a lot of a lot of things put together over here now we talk about like scaling so uh if you remember i was in the initial stage i was talking about like all these different uh you know terminologies like problem statement iterate and innovate data driven user expansion so all these are the most important blocks according to me there are like different other techniques as well as i have mentioned earlier uh these are the ones that i personally feel would help a product manager to think about scaling so in order for us to like you know scale uh we need to like again think about having all our frameworks in place it could be um take up take up anything over here all these are not in a specific order these are all like the important aspects that is like required for us to like think about how to scale so uh, the important thing that over here is to not go on problem solve the important thing for us here is to like understand what the customer actually wants and and provide them maybe the customer would want want like a b c three things but as a product manager you cannot go and like build all those three things together and go shove it to the customer it's not going to work because the customer would be like too overwhelmed looking at all these options and uh, you know he'd be taken aback to like you know to not have the complete experience of a or the b or the c over there right so i tell you an example um when i when when we started like working on uh, uh working on uh, figuring out what to do with the refurbished uh, framework with an ebay uh there were a lot of talks between the product leaders and like different teams trying to understand what we need to like go and cater first so uh when you go to a website like ebay or amazon and when you try to like you know buy an item um you are going to you you would go with your mind like a customer comes in with a mind if i go to amazon i would get xyz item if i go to ebay i would get like xyz item but in a different way or i would go look for like specific item on specific e-commerce platforms so in that case what we did was we did a heavy market research 
and uh, we understood that the uh, the most sold refurbished items over eBay are uh, you know the electronics or uh, and the sneakers and uh, you know uh, laptops. So we had like different categories that were listed in like uh, one, two, three, like in the level of priority. So uh, it helped us to like you know understand what the market wants the market is looking at ebay and saying that hey i come to your website every day looking for like refurbished goods under specific categories but i'm able to like you know see a whole bunch of other stuff and it looks like so uh claustrophobic for me to like uh, you know cluttered sorry clustered for me with like all these different options in front of me so why don't you clean it up so as a product manager what i did was like i had to like you know do a competitive analysis uh and see what the other brands and what the other products are uh, you know doing at this space and how are they're trying to like you know solve this problem for their customers and how ebay can like stand apart and deliver quality results with that so uh the market research helped me to like you know um understand how well the market is behaving in the current trends and what i need to give to the customers in like the top priority order and we went to we went back to our engineering room and uh, we told the engineers to you know like pull certain data that will help us to understand how many customers are there like regionally or how many customers are trying to like you know buy it uh, periodically and have all those uh, have all those reports ready as well for us to like you know evaluate and see if we are even going through the right path so this kind of exercise is really essential for a product manager to understand and deliver enhancements in an existing product like e you would have always gone to ebay and you would still go to ebay even if you don't have this functionality but is the product experience going to be better are we going to like retain that user are we going to like you know be able to like convince a new market with an existing framework these are the type of questions that we need to like you know think as a product manager when you think about scaling a product so when we started building refurbished under specific categories for eBay, it it really helped the customer to uh, you know understand and get the desired results in the way that they wanted. Because uh, if I go and have a refurbished um, uh, plant for for sale, uh, say a planter for sale, it's it, it, it's a, it's like a lot of effort put into like such a menial thing where uh, the um, the product life cycle i mean the life cycle of the customer on that specific vertical is going to be like really really minimal so the effort that you put in like you know building a framework which is not catering enough need is not going to help us similarly if you are going to like you know help a customer buy a refurbished iphone or a refurbished uh, computer so you're adding in a lot of value for your product you're adding in, you're bringing in like a lot of users to eBay or to your specific platform by providing the niche and curated experience for your customer to go and like buy stuff or to go and experience the product that they want over there. So that, so making room for a user and making room for a customer to go and experience the required, um, the required product feature is really essential as a product manager when you think about scaling a product because uh scaling is not just about the product feature built in it or uh, you know making like different versions of your product scaling is also about the penetration of new markets the penetration of like new user bases and uh, are trying to like you know retain the existing customer base so it is also important for the product managers to be uh, the voice of customers because once you onboard a customer into your product yeah, our, our job doesn't end there like it should it shouldn't be like a place where you know what hey uh, you've onboarded everything looks fine take care and i'm good uh, and uh, and just like scoot off like it, it doesn't work that way because you because it is very important for us to like you know retain a customer rather than like uh, retain a customer as a important as like going and building a new market or uh, uh, bringing in like new user uh, new, new user base into the product 
So in order for us to like, you know, do that, we need to, uh, you know, uh, start taking feedbacks more seriously and be in like a constant touch with like different verticals of the uh, engine over here. Uh, it could be uh, the engineering piece and it should be also the business side and it should also talk about, uh, you know, how, what are you going to like solve for your customer and how your customer is feeling about the product and taking all those feedbacks and prioritizing them and curating them and building blocks that will help the product to scale and also the user to stay happy in your product. And in order for us to like, you know, go, go and do all this, we need to have few essentials. So those essentials are listed here. Performances, processes, automate, frameworks, objective key results, customer experience and trends, design for delight and prioritize. So the so as a product manager, when you want to like scale a product, you think about what are you giving something along with the existing product experience that would allow you to even compete in the race of scaling a product into a new market or an existing market or or, or be it anything. So what what will help? a user or what you help what would help anybody to understand if they if these are like happening correctly the performance of your product so how stable is your product in the market be it rain or shine does your product does what it needs to do uh, is it is it giving the is it giving the users what it is required to give and is the experience seamless those are very critical when you want to like scale a product because Based on the performances as where we usually have, um, we usually have um, a, a point for us to like say if you are doing the right job or not. So uh, in order for us to like you know keep the performances on top notch, we should always stay uh, hungry and we should always stay vigilant about having using spikes uh, and have like contingency plans and having plan of actions when when it when when it comes to like you know scaling a product when you're going to scale a product you are uh, you know marching towards uh, you know increasing the capacity of how the product is functioning and at the same time making room for new users to come and experience it from a technical standpoint it would sound like you need to make like two uh, decisions it could be either horizontal or vertical scaling you either increase the capacity of what your product is already capable of or you increase the support of where your product is being like hosted or how where your product is being like you know served from it could be an external server like just increase the uh, you know the server uh, usage and uh, you'd be good so those are like the two different basic uh, ideas when it comes to uh, you know increasing uh, uh, managing the usage uh, usage spikes for your product so uh, what are we doing what are we going to like do uh, when it comes to uh, you know enable such performance uh, you know, enhancements or such, uh, you know, a uh, scaling. We need like certain processes. We need we need certain methods, uh, certain principles and guidelines for us to like enable to do that seamlessly and without any um, hassle. So the processes at the same time sh should make your lives easier and should make uh, the other person's life easier as well. Because uh, when you start investing a lot of time on defining or doing repetitive work, when you do a lot of processes and when you are just marching that field every day, you don't have the time to think about, you will not have the time to think about what you want to do, over, do with your product and what you want to like do about scaling the product. A product manager shouldn't spend a lot of time with processes, uh, with, with like, you know, repetitive works, uh, but he should have like enough room or she should have like enough room to think about how to scale a product. In order for us to make that room, we need to like have certain processes which will help us to, you know, take care of the work which are, which could be like automated or which could be like you know done easier and uh, uh, which will also help us to like you know unlearn what we are doing uh, repetitively or what we are doing wrong and have a continual improvement with respect to the work that we are doing will enable a product manager to have a clarity of thoughts when it comes to scaling a product and uh, the other important aspect over there is automation 
automation saves lives it will save time time is the crux of a product manager because a product delivered in the wrong time is as bad as a product never developed because it's not solving anything it is going to a failure and all the effort that you have put in is never going to be like replicated because the marketing time was bad uh, or the penetration time was bad a uh, big so a uh, time is the essential crux for a product manager to go and solve the problem so uh, so if you automate stuff it would help you to like you know manage all those repetitive tasks it will help you to have room for innovation when you, once you start like having the room for innovation is where your new ideas will start getting structurized into like breakable modules or be it a product itself so in order for us to like you know do that we also need to like you know accelerate our solutions as i told you time is the crux for a product manager if you think about like solving a customer's problem today and if you wait it wait, wait it out for like say like 2 3 days the problem might be like an older problem for the customer themselves there are going to be like new set of problems coming in like every single day so that doesn't mean that our prioritization prioritization should be like you know uh, uh really uh dynamic it 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 needs to be in a way where uh, the solutions that we are building are going to like cater the customer's immediate needs and have room for you know like accelerating their solutions to perform few other tasks that would help the customers to like you know stay afloat with your product so that's that's where we need to like have those acceleration of solutions so in order for us to like uh, you know um, grow we need to have a framework and we need to strategize the growth like i told you earlier we need to like strategize how are we going to like grow and what is going to be our span we cannot have unachievable targets set in our mind and march towards uh, uh, the that march so in order to uh, you know help us understand what we are going to like do it is very essential for us to understand when we are going to like achieve that are we going to like do it in a span of 6 months or are we going to like you know achieve it in a span of like one year or how well your market is like behaving right now and how well do you predict the market to you know behave after like 6 or 8 months so marching towards that and having like realistic goals will help your product to like scale and will also boost your morale to like you know look at the achievable targets when you achieve that it gives you a confidence it gives you a boost for you to like go and hit the next set of like targets so that that should be like a step by step process as well and uh, keeping really minimalistic key metrics under the okr um when you consider a product there are like a ton tons of report or tons of metrics that you can like derive out from uh customer base user base user id uh have it customer name information uh what are they doing and when are they doing it how are they doing it like so etc etc have like tons and tons of information that you can like pull out from but as a product manager you would need to like understand what are the key metrics that are essential for you to like go ahead and scale your product so say uh for example uh if you take amazon you go into amazon kindle and uh, if i want to like look at the kindle metrics and i am trying to like you know scale my product i want to like you know make sure that kindle is being readable by everybody so when i go and look at the existing customer base i will have like a lot of information right so what are the information that is going to like help me to actually go and scale the product well informations like uh you know how many users are not registered or how many users are one time users or how many users are actually spending time with publications will these out of these three i think how many users are actually spending time on reading the publications actually matters to me because i need to understand what is a product life uh, lifetime and i need to understand uh, what the customer is like spending most of his time on and i need to understand uh, what kind of like pain points are is he like going through when he is like uh, reading a paper or reading a publication over kindle and derive a pattern on uh, what could be like built next so that the customer feels happier when he touches the kindle again rather than focusing on uh, you know blogs like uh, how many uh, uh, sorry how many failed uh, login attempts are being made or uh, how many other uh, you know users just log in once in a day so those kind of like information are not required for me at that point so you need to understand what is your key 
metrics that is essential for you to like go and deliver a product or go and like scale a product in order for you to like you know do that um, in order for you to like do that you need to like have uh, you know a measurable outcome uh, when i say measurable outcome when you when you look at a product there are, there are two things that happens when a product is being like you know built one is the output and another stuff is the outcome so the output is the product's behavior uh, the way how it should behave and the outcome is how the product is solving the purpose like is it is it actually helping the customers to like you know do the stuff that they are required to do so those are the those are the two different aspects that you need to be like considered about when you are measuring the outcome for uh, getting the key metrics and we have already spoken about uh, customer experience and friends so uh, we need to understand how the impression of the product test uh, amongst the customer because that will help you to like determine if your product is in the right track and if you want to like you know do certain elements of steps that would help you to like you know elevate from the current stage to a uh, scaling part uh, so we have already spoken a lot about the market research and how how essential it is for you to like you know uh, determine the product scalability here uh so i'll move on to the design for the light uh so i usually write a 5q uh document uh 5q document is uh uh you know um something which talks about what when how when and why so when you have those crystal clear right in front of you it helps you to determine how the design needs to look like um uh, and for me when it comes to design it's very important to have a simplified uh process so as a user you are supposed to not think when you are using a product so that's as a product manager all we are working towards is making sure that the user is not thinking when he's using a product that doesn't mean that we are uh, you know uh, you are you're, you're turning them into a lazy person or something it's just that when a user starts thinking about what he needs to do in the product he actually stops uh you know he actually like starts uh, uh spending lesser time in completing the task say for example you have a cluttered um web page uh a e-commerce web page with like various number of like deals coupons and uh, you know different things of like uh, things that you can buy there uh everything thrown right in front of you uh, to your home page then you are actually going to go and buy something uh something that you actually know what you're going to do for therefore the way how it is presented would make the user feel so uh, stressed and he would start thinking about why is this button here oh do i need to go and click there oh what happens if i go and click here so the chain of thoughts and the chain the chain of thoughts that happen inside a user will slowly wean them down in from experiencing the real product so we need to be like super clear about like not uh making the customers confused so simplification is is really complex to achieve and once you have the clarity of thought of what you are selling to your customer and how you want the customer to experience it you can you can just like put a blinder and uh, you know just go ahead and show just that to the customer so that he doesn't feel stressed or she doesn't feel stressed when they are experiencing your product and in order for us to uh, you know have all this in place it is also very essential for us to like you know prioritize the ideas into uh, achievable modules and for us to have such like achievable modules our ideas needs to be data driven our ideas can be like really abstract at the scratch but unless you don't have the data like uh, who are your target customers or who's your current market what is your customer talking about or what is your uh, competitor talking about the existing market trends those are the different set of like data and how is your product behaving and what are you going to like do on top of that and uh, where is the room for improvement all these can be like achieved from your data so these are the very very essential and crucial things that are required for us to uh, you know think about when it comes to scaling a product um, and uh, that being said and i am again reiterating the fact that there are different other techniques and there are different other, other thoughts that would uh, help you to achieve scaling a product but what has worked for me uh, are these frameworks that i have like presented right in front of you so far so i think uh, 
my thoughts and my uh, my ideas of scaling a product and conceptualizing product scalability uh, has been like helpful to you all. And uh, I really, really look forward to hearing your thoughts and your comments and feedbacks on uh, what you think about this uh, product scalability techniques and ideas. Uh, and uh, I look forward to, uh, you know, hearing your comments on um, how this went. And uh, if you have anything to tell me, please feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. And uh, thank you for the session. Thank you. Take care.